Universal Studios is known for its monster movies. Dracula being one of those is one of the crown jewels in our library. The walls around are bare, as though the dead were there. There are far worse things waiting man than death. The Centennial Project is Universal Pictures' 100th anniversary. We are releasing 100 of our titles. Dracula is one of the Centennial Restoration titles. We are scanning at very high resolution so that it can be enjoyed by everybody in any means that they want. I am Dracula. I bid you welcome. The process that we used in restoring Dracula starts with understanding what sort of film and sound elements we have at our disposal. The material in the vaults that we have here goes all the way back into the late 20s, early 30s. It's a pretty incredible volume. With Dracula, we also have an original press book. Dracula was originally marketed as a romance. It was released on February 14th, 1931. The film element that we used to do this particular restoration was a nitrate lavender positive, which is made directly from the original negative and is the most original surviving film element we have for this title. At some point in the life of this film, those elements were donated to the Library of Congress, and we have an agreement with them that when we need to access them, um, we can. Nitrate is pretty tricky. Uh, it is very combustible. Uh, basically, it is almost like gunpowder. There's none here on the lot. It is stored in an environment that is as safe as possible. Shipping nitrate is highly regulated from the packaging of it to the way that it is moved by truck. Once it came out here, it was a matter of bringing it into a facility that had all the permits that could use this material. We were pretty fortunate with Dracula. One set of elements was the base for everything. We are here. We are safe. In addition to the Bela Lugosi version of Dracula that's being restored, we're also restoring the Spanish Dracula. That film is really unique in Universal's history. The cast and crew from the Bela Lugosi version would come to Universal and film during the day, and then the Spanish cast would come in at night and film on the exact same sets. Soy Dracula. No podía usted ser más oportuno. The Latin American version is a little bit more sensual. It's a little bit more sexy. Que me prometas una cosa. The Bela Lugosi version is a little more straight-laced and narrow, if you will. Lupita Tovar's wardrobe was much more sleek and almost see-through in some scenes, while Helen Chandler was much more buttoned up in her version of Dracula. <laughs> to be able to give that the same treatment that we're doing for the English Dracula is that's a great opportunity. What we found with both films, like many from the early 30s, is that they suffered quite a bit of damage. With Spanish Dracula, we were unable to use reel three of the original negative. Fortunately, Universal's preservation efforts include collaboration with a number of international film archives. And as a result, we have another print of the Spanish version and use reel three from that to complete the restoration. In dealing with scratches, one of the best ways to eliminate those is to use what is known as a wet gate scan. What that involves is that the film, as it passes through the gate in the scanner, passes through a liquid bath. That liquid has the same uh, index of refraction as the film emulsion and therefore fills in the scratch and is not picked up by the scanner. As we're scanning the film, we are already performing some form of restoration. Once we have those digital files, we take those into many different workstations, working in parallel to do things like tear and scratch removal, dust busting or dirt removal. In Dracula, we've had some severe film damage on a few frames. I am able to look at the bad frame and see what frames are around it to see if maybe I could steal portions of a frame before or after the damage and composite it together. And I'm able to paint that out. Quite a few shots needed stabilization and our software will track the actual original camera movement and negate the camera movement or do a percentage of stabilization because you want to keep that natural camera weave in there. The Dracula main title, there's a large jump cut. The size of the title changes. At some point in time, someone had made a edit as you can see here by the splice lines. We smooth that out so it's imperceptible now. Even though it's black and white, it still requires some form of uh, density and contrast correction. We call it color for lack of a better word. 
When this thing first started, we had something that looked very washed up. So what you're trying to do is maintain the contrast to make it look mysterious and spooky, but still see the detail. We can isolate an area of the frame and either make it darker or lighter. If we can fix it and not compromise the overall image, we usually try to fix it. The whole point of this process is to not let the viewer know that we were here. Vampires of pure myth. The superstition of yesterday can become the scientific reality of today. Dracula, it's a mono recording, and we're going to keep it mono and present it in a cleaner fashion goes through a process of going through perf by perf to make sure that we have no imperfections in that before we hang it on a reproducer. Once we have it up there, we are now going to bring it into a digital recorder, and basically that will be the element that we'll actually create a restoration from. We have some incredible artists who are able to go in and sonically deal with some of the issues that are inherent in the source material. As I'm going through, I can zoom in on various areas of the soundtrack and isolate pops, ticks, bumps, and individually clean up. The wear and tear of time is some of the biggest challenges. In the opening music of the film, which is from Swan Lake, just a very garbled piece where there's a speed change, where they call it wow. Fortunately, for this music cue existed in Spanish Dracula. So we were able to go back and find a, a matching piece of the same music with the same quality. Now it's clear again. There's a lot of noise that, that exists in the original soundtrack. When we listen to the raw track, there's just a, a horrible hiss throughout that entire picture. Now we really get to hear the movie in a clarity it's never been heard before. Listen to them. Children of the night. As soon as we've done a complete pass of denoise, we go into a larger room, and it's all about making scenes even. There is no adding of any additional material, no changing the intent of the original director's view on how he wanted the sound to be. We want you to feel like you actually went to the theater in 1931 and heard it just as brand new as the day it was made. The last rays of the day's sun will soon be gone and another night will be upon us. It's an unbelievable opportunity to be working on such classic movies. Get shots you're not quite sure that you know how you're going to take care of, and in the end, they come out pretty awesome. Yes, must. Our goal is to make sure that the image that was on that piece of film is here for everyone to see. You're leaving the legacy that you took something that was in trouble and you rescued it, if you will, and brought it back to a better luster of what the original filmmaker would have loved to be able to see. We do have the capabilities of doing so much more today because of the digital technology. We take a great deal of pride and we feel a great deal of responsibility for being true to that content and enabling that content to be passed down generation to generation and to make it available for many years to come. He will live through the centuries to come, as I have lived. Good night.